even more on to the back with the tiny of one big kid a uh, long haul last time I finished at page 134 and on second paragraph she said fast food places pla uh, places slow kids into with cheap plastic toys to trick them into eating sugar and fat and we weren't gonna fall into that trap mom said she had a much better alternative and handed me a lunch bag with my name on it gregory mommy meal and cheerios food fun activities all mixed up and now scrabble the words to find the wonky phrase. Measure electroma is see fool. Two punny. Q. Why did the rabbit like a water ship down? A. It was a hair raising tail. Name that noble cry. Name that noble prize man. Cross um. Capitals crossword. Mom said she got many meal because uh, from family frolic, which I guess uh, should not have some come as a surprise. Inside the bag was a tuna fish and sandwich, an orange and a little carton of milk, plus something right in tin foil. Mom said I had to eat my food before I unwrapped the tin foil because it was my prize. But I wish I had just opened it right away because I should have hadn't eaten the whole orange. I if I don't know the prize was has a pack of my my flashcards. Archie got a flashcard in his lunch too, and we we both we could both see where this was heading. So before mom could turn the next hour of the trip into a tutor to a um, tutoring session. I pulled it up at one of the games that we had packed in the big road bag. The the most the the game I grabbed was called I You Must Confess, and then Mom saw it. She got so excited she forgot all about the flashcards. I read the I read the rules, which were pretty simple. One person takes a card from the deck and reads it out loud to someone. I must confess I've met a famous patient. I met I met a famous person. If one of the players has done the things that's written on the card, they they earn a point, and the first thing to get to ten points wins. I was a little spectacle at first, but I have to admit the game was actually kind of fun. I learned a lot of things about dad and mom, and I never knew about before. I found out that Dad had a, had a pet cha chameleon when he was a kid, and that Mom dyed her hair blonde once, which really surprised me. Believe it or not, even Roger was getting into the game. He got a point for being the hood person who'd ever sleep out overnight for tickets to a concert, and another point was getting a bug stuck in his ears, which I remember like it was yesterday. Dad and Roderick were, were neck to neck with nine points, and whoever scored next would win them the game. Mom seemed really happy everyone was getting along and having fun. Then she pulled a new card out of the deck and read, read it. I must confess, I've toilet papered a neighbor's house. I'm really sure, I'm really sure, I'm... I'm really sure nobody is gonna win, so because she was already reaching for the next one. But Roderick started acting like he had just won the lottery. I win, I win. Mom thought Roderick was lying to get a point, but I t I, he told her it was true. He said um, that a few months ago, he and his uh, bandmates toilet paper and Mrs. Tootles' house next door after she called the police to complain that um, they were making too much sun rehearsing. Roderick thought, Roderick thought the whole thing was pretty funny, but Mom didn't seem amused. Let me get this straight. You and two of your bandmates um, toilet papered in an elderly woman's house. If was if it, I was Roger, I would have changed my story real quick and uh, said I was just joking uh, around um, to get uh, women the game. But Roger didn't seize his chance to bail out. No, there was there were four of us. 
Mom handed the dead pool over to the side of the road. Then handed Roger her phone and made him call Mrs. Tuttle to apologize, which was awkward for everyone in the car. I'm sorry for a toilet paper in your house, ma'am. After that, it was quiet in the van for a long time. Mom was about to pop in the next band CD in the stereo, but luckily Manny had fallen asleep by them, so she couldn't. If you wake Manny up in the middle of one of his maths, he'll go completely ballistic, and there's no calming him down. So whenever Manny falls asleep, Mom and Dad do everything they can to keep him that away. Hey, has anyone seen my shh? I was big on naps when I was Manny's age, too. I used to stay an hour-long nap after lunch every day, and when I started preschool, we had an official nap time where everyone pulled out a map to sleep on the floor. Uh, if you ask me, I think they should give kids a nap time all through college. But but they stop doing it after preschool because before before I, which I found out the hard way on the first day of the kindergarten, we, after we had our snacks, I asked the teacher when the mats were, so we could lie down and recharge our recharge our batteries. But they said the kindergarten nerd had nap times, and I thought it was he she was just making a funny joke. Yeah, right. A few minutes later, the whole class was making a paper bag, paper bag puppet. Apparently, I was the one who didn't get the heads up about the no nap thing, because for the rest of the day, everyone else seemed fine while I could barely function. Church, church. I'm glad Mom remembered to bring a pacifier on the trip because as long as Manny got one stuck in his mouth, he can sleep through just. About anything, Manny lost his favorite pacifier last night. But Dad ran out to get a new one at the store that, at near our house, that sells gag gifts. I guess it was a little, looks like a little strange, but it was just as a regular one. Suck, suck, suck. Manny had been sleeping peacefully for about an hour today when he we stopped at a tool toll booth. Dad rolled down his window to get a ticket, and the guy in the booth, such a loud voice, he sounded like he was speaking through a megaphone. Hope y'all having a awesome day. Manny started to fuss. Manny started to fuss, fuss, and his pacifier came halfway on his mouth. But、uh, luckily, Roger reacted quickly, and Manny fell back to sleep. I think Mom was a little frustrated that Manny was napping in the front of the place. She said she had remarked、um, a bunch of places on her nap when she wanted us to stop and get our、um, get our some sightseeing, sightseeing. But by now, we had to keep drawing. The problem I had with Manny's nap was that. I really need to go and get out of the car and stretch, but I couldn't. I tried to make myself comfortable, but、uh, the stuff piled around me. It was impossible. Luckily, my backpack was in the was in the arms rest room, and behind my seat, because it was some books and other things I brought and entertained myself. Mom's all mom's always saying. And Mom always trying to get me to read stuff that's a intr enriching, enriching. Which, but when it comes to books, I know what I like. And ever since elementary school, my favorite book has been the ones in the Underpant Bandit series. The Underpant Bandit's book are just on about these two kids named Brett and Brody who go back in time and steal underwear. From the famous people, they can so they can put the underwear in a museum, in the museum, underwear bandits by Mike, by Mick Davis. I know that sounds kind of ridiculous, but the book are actually pretty funny. And just as Ram Gold returned to his masterpiece, Bryce snatched the painter's favorite pair of boxers, were thank which thank goodness were clean. The books are 
super popular with boys at my school, but the teachers hate them because all the rude humors. Well, I think we'll leave it there. For the rude humors tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed my book. Um, these days, and I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.